So I did my first years in um, uh, college in Germany and at Humboldt Universität in uh, Berlin. And I studied separately philosophy um, and economics. Um, and then I found that there was not a very good interaction between these two uh, subjects. So after two and a half, three years, I transferred to LSE, did my master's and then my PhD uh, at LSE in the philosophy department by doing a master's in economics and philosophy and then a PhD in philosophy. In economics, um, the, at least with respect to microeconomics, the models of decision making have always been interpreted both as or both in a descriptive and a normative uh, perspective. Uh, so we see that uh, some of the uh, earlier models, Savage for example, clearly favors a normative interpretation of his expected utility model, but then we see in behavioral economics uh, much more an attempt to provide descriptively accurate models. But at, at the same time, economists have used, for example, the Savage model also to describe behavior. And um, we now see that sometimes people are using, for example, cumulative prospect theory mo uh, uh, models in order to um, measure and represent preferences uh, also for welfare uh, economics, so for purposes of evaluating uh, policies. Any intervention that aims to change behavior that's kind of trivial, so that also includes um, interventions through incentives or through coercion. But in the way I'm, just, I'm more interested in that particular part uh, where we excluding the standard interventional tools of, say, taxation uh, or, uh, uh, or coercion in some form, and instead we're using um, insights into uh, the psychological makeup, into the psychological mechanisms that drive uh, behavior and then uh, intervene somewhere there. The most famous um, type, of course, is uh, nudging that intervenes in the choice architecture that is in the environment uh, in which uh, chooser uh, makes a decision. Um, but there are other uh, forms of intervention as well. For example, when we are intervening um, by uh, trying to train someone's competences or um, uh, trying to um, help someone in other ways improve uh, their decision making. So boosting uh, would, is the term that Ralph Hardwick and I use in order to describe these alternative uh, ways of intervening in behavior uh, to nudges, where we argue that, well, we, it's, it's possible to train um, competences and um, thus uh, change uh, behavior. Um, and there are important differences insofar as that um, sometimes this might be more uh, effective than a nudge, as for example, when we're intervening by, we're, we're training um, a competence in one area, and then, that co then the persons that are thus trained, or the group thus trained, might be able to um, use these newly acquired competences uh, to improve their decisions in some other area as well. This is what we call a spillover effect. Another, another perspective, another dimension in which sometimes a boost might be preferable to a nudge is um, that um, it is perhaps in certain situations ethically uh, preferable. So nudges sometimes are criticized for being, for manipulating uh, a, an individual um, because they circumvent um, the rational uh, uh, decision uh, making um, pro processes of individuals by changing features in the environment that the individual might not even be fully aware of. But boosts can't really do this. What boosts need is the cooperation of the boosted individual. So I can train you to acquire competence, 
But if you're disinterested or you actively want to resist this, then you might not let yourself be trained. Or if you're trained, you might nevertheless decide not to uh, employ that competence in a particular situation. So the uh, manipulation criticism is uh, what is one aspect that at least might apply to some nudges, even though it cannot be applied, it cannot speak against uh, boost interventions. I found very interesting in interaction with my co-author Ralph Herpig, who is a psychologist, is um, that I often bring to the table um, a much more um, theoretical perspective. Yeah? So there's no fundamental distinction between his interest and mine. We're both aiming to um, improve um, our understanding of the variety of behavioral interventions. Um, but I would, I'm, for example, more interested in sort of questions of, well, how can we categorize this? And sort of how, what role does the concept of mechanism or the concepts of mechanism play? in categorizing this and how can that categorization then be connected to let's say uh, justifications of choice uh, of one uh, intervention over another uh, in a in a particular kind of environment um, so that uh, we see how the categorizing tool becomes useful for uh, these justificatory uh, purposes.